because so everyone was given to a disclosure that, that the small group of finalists. And Gentry was aware of the situation. But, but it wasn't a plan to do anything like, you know, charge it. Again, tuition is not a definite. If we can find ways to avoid it, we will. Does the board imagine that it can be created the end of the scenario of 1902 by the multi billionaires who give an order of a million dollars to the Union of State of College? Uh, and if so, why is the president telling the Cooper community that it best the probability of such a scenario? Uh, because he's right. Uh, you know, like, we can imagine it, you know, we can hope for it, but the reality of it is that it's extremely slim. I mean, if you know, you have the phone numbers for any of those billionaires, you know, uh, let me know, you know. <laughs> But it's, it's probably not a reality. Thank you. Um, and thank you all very much. Um, we are going to now go to the next category, which is about the deficit. Uh, we're, we've been at only 35 minutes. I think that uh, we will probably have lots of time for questions after we get through the, uh, this part of the uh, day. Uh, can you reconfirm? Can you reconfirm that the present annual deficit of $16.5 billion? I'm sorry, that's not loaded. Uh, can you uh, can reconfirm the present annual deficit of $16.5 $16 million and that there is no padding in this figure? Uh, there's no padding in the figure. I think the number is more like 16.3, but I'm not 100% here. I don't want to commit to that. But it's, that's the range we're in, and there's no padding. That's the real The financial information sent with President Bruce's November 4th email, which is uh, uh, Friday, Friday. Uh, identify the current budget deficit as deficit drawdown from the investment portfolio. Does this mean that investment principal has been sold as opposed to using interest and dividends? Well, I'm not sure how that question is worded, but what, what that means is, uh, as an example, if you have $100 and you, you're gaining 5% interest on it, you'll get $105 at the end of the year. But if you need some of that money because you have bills to pay and you take $10 out, pay the bill. Well, next year you only have, you know, $95 million and you're now getting the 5% interest on 95. And if you have to draw out of that again, so you keep lessening the investment pool to make up for the deficit and each year your return on that becomes smaller because the investment pool is smaller. And that's a systemic deficit problem. That's what we have. Does Cooper occasionally rebalance the portfolio, selling some assets and buying others? And uh, can we realize some improvement when the markets recover as we inevitably will? Uh, yeah, the investment committee stays on top of the investments all the time. And, and they meet uh, monthly and they go through the portfolios and see what assets, you know, basically investments in, in a very diversified portfolio from you know, emerging markets and all, all sorts. I'm not the financial whiz on the board, but and unfortunately those guys couldn't make it tonight out of town. Uh, but yeah, so they're constantly buying, not constantly, not seeing uh, but they're constantly monitoring the investments and what we should stay in and what we should switch mics to. So, you know, as, as far as selling as opposed to uh, the way the question is worded, I'm not sure. But, you know, normally we would try to reap the benefits of those returns. Uh, and this is my own interjection. interjection. Um, but we can't expect the same kind of recovery that we had in the past for when the markets return. Oh, because we're starting with a lower pool. You know, because the market conditions are the market conditions are, are lousy compared to the way they used to be. Now, if the markets go up, I have some confidence that we'll reap some rewards for that because the investment committee really is doing a good job. And just like any other time, the market does well, they do well. But it would be hard to recoup all of the money that has been thrown out. Uh, shifting gears a bit, how long do you plan to continue the current faculty hiring freeze? Uh, that's a decision that's up to the administration. Do you believe the faculty or staff unions have contributed to this? Uh, not directly, but every course that we have has contributed to the deficit. So to say it, you know, it hasn't been part of the problem isn't true either. But again, I'm not pointing the finger and saying that's the cause. There is no one cause. The cost of higher education keeps going up, salaries go up. We have to pay competitive salaries to get the faculty and the administration that we need. Uh, this question may have already been answered, but just uh, to ask it. Why did the board allow the deficits to pile up to such huge amounts? Why did it not, why did it not act earlier? Uh, it has acted earlier. When we uh, decided to build the building, we also asked the administration for a 10% cut throughout the board. And we didn't quite make 10%, but uh, cuts were made. Outside consultants were brought in to review the situation. And they found that we really couldn't make any more substantial cuts 
without jurisdiction affecting the programs. I mean, I think everybody knows we run a pretty neat ship here. When we were doing the search for the president, uh, you know, when the numbers were revealed to some of the candidates, they were pretty shocked at how much we do with a little bit of money to get to our schools. I mean, also the accrediting boards that always comment that we're a very clean ship here. So it's just a matter of course going up. And again, Cooper Union is not unique in that. It's, it's endemic throughout my education. Uh, could you repeat uh, one more time what happened to the $97 million that Cooper received uh, when it sold the rights to the 51 Astro Place? Well, it went into you know the fund which uh, covers the cost of the building. Um, it's hard to, I'm not a financial person, but money was brought in from the sale of the building, money was brought in from the capital campaign, and money was brought in from the loan taken out on the Chrysler building. So, you know, that money is used to pay for the things that we need. Part of it went to cover the cost of the building, part went to cover deficits, and part went into the investment pool. And the part that went into the investment pool was earning more than we were paying for the money. That was one of the reasons for taking the loan out. Also another reason, since I'm talking about the loan, it was determined that since the bulk of our endowment was tied up in real estate, primarily the price of building, that it would be a wise move to take cash out in terms of the loan, so we didn't have you know, all of our eggs, or most of our eggs in one basket. So it was a wise move to diversify our portfolio. Um, this is a question to you personally. Higher education is a fundamental investment in our future. What infrastructural investments have you made in Cooper during your presence on the board that have already yielded a return? And which ones have you made which have not yielded the return and which ones have failed? Uh, well, what I've done is I spend time and uh, donate money here. I've, I've contributed and I've participated in phone for many years and I try to help out with the development of it any way I can or I'm asked to.